In this lecture, we're going to take a look at production possibilities frontiers, or sometimes people call these production possibilities curves. And it's a simple model of how we might make decisions. And this simple model, we only have two choices of what we can spend our time and our resources on. Now, economics really does get more complicated. And in the real world, there won't just be two choices. But this simple model helps us try to do some of the calculations and get some understanding about a basic situation. That's kind of the purpose of a model. And so a production possibilities frontier, the word frontier means boundary. And what we're going to do is draw a boundary between things that we can do, things that are possible, with our resources and things that we cannot do because we don't have the level of resources required. And in this simple model, we're going to look at someone perhaps stranded on an island and their possibilities for what they can do given their resources. And here, this simple person has two choices about how to spend his or her time, either by fishing, and this is the amount of pounds of fish that they could get with different combinations of spending their time fishing or picking berries, and this is the amount of berries that they could get. So one possibility, possibility A, is to not spend any time fishing, to spend all their time collecting berries, and if they did, they would be able to get 36 berries or 36 pounds of berries in one day. Possibility B, they could spend some time fishing, but most of their time picking berries, and they would get four fish or four pounds of fish and 35 berries. And so here we have different combinations of what is possible. And now actually everything in between these possibilities will also be possible. And so let's graph these points to see what it looks like. And then we'll do some calculations. And so let's go down here to this graph. And I have these same possibilities down here so that they're easy for us to see. And let's just place points at these different possibilities. Now I'm going to put fish on the x-axis. So let me label my axis down here. And I'm going to put the fruit or the berries up on the y-axis up here. So let me label that fruit. So I'll label it fruit instead of berries. So let me put that right over here. OK, so now let's start graphing points. And I've already got these points uh, drawn over here. We just need to put them where they go. So possibility A is 0 on the fish axis and 36 on the berries axis. So let's place this point at 0 and up at 36. OK. Now possibility B is at 4 fish and 35 berries. So 4 on the x and 35 berries on the y. Let me move that up a little bit. OK. And C, 7 and a half fish and 33 berries. So between 7 and 8 and 33. OK. And 10 and a half and 30. All right. 13 and 26. So if I catch 13 fish, I only have time to catch, uh, to pick 36 Sorry, 26 berries, 15 and 21, right above 20, OK, and 16 and a half and 15, OK, and 17 and a half and 8, and our last possibility, 18 fish that would leave me no time to pick berries. And so we have these points representing possibility A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And now most of the time we'll connect these with little line segments. So let me do that so we can view this frontier and what it looks like. So we're just playing connect the dots here. All right, and let me tell it not to shade 
that in. Okay, there we go. Actually, I can improve that a little bit. Okay, so now we have all the points connected, and this is our frontier. So in what sense is this a boundary or a frontier? Because we know that it is possible for us to collect, this is uh, possibility D, we know that it's possible at point D, for example, to have 10 and a half fish and 30 berries in one day. That is possible. And so we also know that it must be possible for us to do something like uh, this point. So what is going on at this point? Well, it looks like we're talking about 30 fruit, 30 berries, but only seven fish, right? So that point right there looks like, that blue point, about 30 berries and seven fish. We know that that point must be possible also because we could have 30 berries and even more fish. So a point inside this production possibilities frontier is also possible. However, if we move this point over here. Let me copy it. Put that back at about 7 and 30. So here's another point. This point is impossible, so let me color that differently. Pink. This At this point we are talking about 15 fish and 30 berries. This point is impossible unattainable. We can't do this. Now, why not? Well, we know that we can't do that because if we have 30 berries, we know that the most fish that we could possibly get would be 10 and a half pounds of fish. So we can't, with our amount of time, resources, and technology, get to a point like this pink point because not only do we have 30 berries, we're talking about having 15 fish. And so that's not possible. But this point over here is possible. However, even though it's possible, we call a point like this inefficient. Why inefficient? Because we could do better. Now, I, al I always like to say that a, a point like this pink one is something that we can't do today, but we could do it later. So I like to say that it's unattainable now. But we could do it in the future if we get more time, more labor, more time more and better technology. So anything on the frontier, this frontier represents the best that we can do. The most that we can get out of our technology is going to be one of these points. And so if we're on this line anywhere, we call those sorts of points efficient. So let me label that. So these points are efficient. So Anywhere on this line, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or I, or anywhere between these lines. These little line segments also represent points that are possible. For example, um, between A and B, at A we're getting no fish and 36 berries. At B we're getting four fish and 35 berries. So it should theoretically be possible for us also to be able to attain a point like this yellow point that's kind of halfway in between. A point like uh, two fish and 35 and a half berries or pounds of berries if you don't like the idea of a berry being a half of a berry. But don't let that occupy your mind too much. So anywhere in between here is efficient or on the line. So this frontier represents a boundary between what we can do, anything in here. So, for example, we could do nothing today, right? That's possible. We could have no fruit and no fish if we just sit on our uh, tails and do nothing. But we would say that's inefficient. First, why are we doing nothing? Why are we not eating today? There's probably something wrong that we're, we could improve on. Uh, maybe you're unemployed, for example. So now that we understand the basic idea of this production possibilities 
frontier or production possibilities curve as sometimes people will call it let's analyze what this curve is telling us by doing some calculations now the one of the main ideas behind talking about the production possibilities frontier model is to see what the trade-offs are between these various points in other words we want to talk about the cost of moving between different pairs of points so for example if I were at A and then I wanted to go to B we want to understand should we go to B do we want to go to B and the only way to figure out whether you would want to go from A to B is to understand the cost of going from A to B so when you go from A to B two things happen first thing you get more fish right at A you have zero fish and at B you have four fish so you're getting something but is it worth it to you to get those fish everybody will have an, a different answer to that question but in order for anyone to answer that question they have to know well how much is this going to cost me I'm getting four fish how much is this going to cost me well it's going to cost you you're going from 36 berries to 35 so the cost is one berry just like one dollar or one euro it's costing you one berry in order to get four fish so if you went into a store and you traded one dollar for four fish each of those fish costs you 0.25 one quarter of a dollar 25 cents and exa in exactly the same way if you trade one berry to get four fish each of those fish costs you one quarter of a berry and so the way I like to think about calculating this is it's the ratio between what are you giving up divided by what you get so it's what you give up the one berry divided by how many fish you get that gives you the price or the cost of the fish of each fish in terms of berries so up here in this little table this is where we're going to calculate these costs and so let me zoom into this table a little bit let's calculate these costs so for example if we're going from A to B this is what we were just uh, talking about we can say between A and B we are getting four fish and we are giving up one fruit and so what's the ratio of the opportunity cost the opportunity cost is how much what you have to give up in order to get um, something else and in this case we want to know per fish so for one each additional fish how many fruit are you giving up so it's one divided by four equals 0.25 from B to C at B we have four fish but we go from four to seven and a half so we are getting three and a half fish and we're giving up 35 down to 33 we're giving up two berries in order to get it so just think about the two berries or fruit that we're giving up as being two dollars so how much are those three and a half fish costing you per dollar sorry <coughs> How many dollars per fish do you have to give up dollars per fish the word per means divide the word per means divide so when you say per fish you're dividing by fish so if we take that 2 divided by 3.5 equals 2 divided by 3.5 you get uh, 0 0.57 0 0.57 so that's like 57 cents per fish or 0.57 berries per fish so you pause the video now that you see how this is done and I'll fill in the rest of the table but you do it yourself and make sure you understand what you're doing okay I'm running out of time so I'm gonna make a second uh, part to this video but here are the numbers uh, that you should get in your table and here we've just looked at going in reverse in the opposite direction from B to A instead of A to B so what you get and what you give up are, are flipped but this four let's make sure you understand that this four means that between F and G for each fish you get you are giving up four berries now I'm gonna come back as I said and I'm gonna explain some more details about this figure and what you should learn